Good morning. I, I of course, will also forget to, um, as they said, eat the mic. Um, I, I'm actually really surprised at how popular this class is. I gave a very similar presentation to the Denver Word Camp, and it was not well attended. And I, I always wonder why, because you know everyone in this room knows that when you build a website, they will not come. You know, it's not. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> So, um, so we've gotten really pretty good at doing blast drip and nurture campaigns and helping our customers who are based on WordPress and other platforms actually reach their customers and understand more about them. So I'm going to throw a lot of numbers at you. And this particular presentation, we usually spend the most time in Q&A. So um, please ask questions, because we have just gathered so much data over the years, and we really started to understand how this is important, and I'm going to show you also my favorite WordPress plugins for helping us achieve these results. Oh, and I have a clicker somewhere, but I won't go looking for it. So uh, this chart, is, as business owners, of course, we need the customers, and we need effective tools for gaining those customers. Um, this one shows that email automation has been shown to increase sales productivity by 14.5% and reduce marketing overhead by... 12.2%. So the first thing I should probably ask is, who in here is already using automated marketing? Mm, not even half. So should I explain automated marketing? OK. So the way that automated marketing works is there are three basic categories for online marketing, online email marketing. And I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about email, but it's not necessarily email. I came from the print industry, and I can tell you that print campaigns are still very important to me and my customers. So automated marketing happens in three ways. You have a blast email or a blast direct mail. And what you're doing is just going out with a really quick message, like a flash sale or, um, you know, hey, come to our website this morning because we're going to do this webinar or something like that. Those are blast emails. They're typically, and I will, I actually do talk about this later, but they're typically a one-off design. They don't have a standard. Drip email, I want you to think about drip irrigation um, in, a, in a field. You know, you've got a pipe out there, and it drops water on your plant consistently. That's drip irrigation. It's not necessarily a leaky faucet, although I think that the leaky faucet um, does give you a good thing to remember, because what you're basically trying to do is stay top of mind. So when somebody wanders away from your website or they saw your Google AdWords or whatever, what you want to do is stay connected with them. And so it's called drip marketing because it's drip, 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 drip. Now, drip marketing is typically a, a single design, and you use it consistently throughout the campaign. A newsletter is a really good example of drip marketing, but so are social media posts. But the consistency should be there, and your drip marketing goes out to either your entire list or the bulk of your list. Nurture marketing is a little bit different. It's very similar to drip marketing, and you'll hear a lot of marketers call them the same thing, but they're not. Nurture marketing is in reaction to something they did. So they visited your website, they abandoned your cart, they clicked on your Google AdWords, they watched your video, and you say, thank you, for doing that, now do this. That's what nurture marketing is about. So these charts show us the uplift that you get when you do nurture marketing or drip marketing. I have a lot of marketers tell me that they don't want to get involved in drip or nurture marketing because they don't want to alienate their customers with too many emails. But study after study has shown that people expect to hear from you once they engage with your brand and that typically once every two weeks is expected. They expect that. So don't be too afraid of engaging that market. Nurture marketing has been shown to average or to reach, I'm sorry, it's not average, it's to reach as much as 451% lift in engagement with your customers increased sales. So how do we do automation? So first you need emails. Oh, first you need to collect email addresses. These are some different plugins that I've used. Um, we're big on testing at Spider Trainers. We're really, really into the data aspect of it. So we've already done all that work, and we've figured out that these are really good ways. 
every single client who comes to your visitor who comes to your website will tell you pop-ups are annoying yeah and they work they work all the time so all sorts of different pop-ups can work now this is actually a gated content pop-up and gated content means that you're going to give them something of value in exchange for their email address so when you go to our website spider trainers you give us your email address and we actually give you our entire library of content so we don't gate individual pieces because what we want to do is overwhelm people with information because we know once they become informed about what drip and drip and nurture marketing can do for them that they're more likely to come back to us as an informed customer and they're more useful to us when they have more information targeting um, let's see so we're gonna we are actually today gonna focus on the three types which we already talked about see so you guys got me all screwed up because I had to explain it so blast marketing and blast marketing here's some examples Clearly, I'm a Starbucks card member. Um, these animations really don't work very well on this thing, do they? There we go. So blast marketing. And drip marketing, we talked about. Again, remember the irrigation system, but the leaky faucet is also a good reminder about how drip marketing can work for you. I'm at a tech show, and I'm technologically challenged. Um, Okay, and so these are good examples of nurture campaigns. And the one thing that all of these campaigns have in common is that the visitor or respondent or recipient or viewer did something, and I said, thank you, thank you very much. And I always think about Elvis when I do that. This slide is usually an Elvis slide. So what we're doing is acknowledging that they took an action, and sometimes we're acknowledging that they took an inaction or had no action. And that's okay. So your nurture marketing is about at least acknowledging that they interacted with your brand and in some way nudging them through the sales funnel to the very next step so that you can engage them and convert them into a customer or whatever it is you're trying to do. But we're all, in the end, trying to make money. Um, more examples. This guy actually... He really does it very well. I took one of his classes, and I get these all the time, so I really like that. Uh, AppSumo, this company is probably the best at nurture marketing of any company on the planet. They're amazing. Um, and the reason that I have all these samples is because I actually sign up for all these programs so I can see how other people are doing it, so I can watch trends. So if you have a brand that ends up in your inbox all the time, and you think, wow, they do a really good job, Copy it. Don't be proud. You know, they, if it works, if it works on you, you are an audience. So it might work on your audience. So the thing about nurture emails is a lot of people think, well, you know, I've had visitors coming to my site for three years now. I've never done anything. I didn't even fire off an automated thank you email. It's not too late. But once you get your campaign going, you have to be consistent. So this is a nurture marketing. What this is reminding you is that as soon as, let's say, cart abandonment, if you're focused on cart abandonment, you have a great website, they're coming over, they add stuff to their cart, but for whatever reason, they're leaving, it's time to instigate a nurture program and start trying to figure out why are they leaving my cart. It might be because your pricing is confusing, it might be because your website is too slow. You might find out that most of your users are on a mobile device, and you have a huge graphic at the bottom of your shopping cart, and it takes so long to load that they're leaving. And you don't know that because you don't have some sort of follow-up campaign that is trying to re-engage that customer and figure out what's going on. Um, I was telling Jennifer before we came in here, one of the things that we found out um, on our website was when we added an arrow to a button, you know, like click here with an arrow, we had as much as 300% more clicks. I mean, it was something really super simple that our button was not clear, so they weren't doing it, they weren't clicking. And we found that out by using nurture marketing combined with A-B testing. So it's not too late to start your nurture marketing campaign. If you have those names in there, <coughs> excuse me, if you have those names, 
get a campaign going and start understanding where you're losing conversions and use your nurture marketing to do that. Nurture emails are also likely to increase the size of your order, and that's what this shows. Um, according to Compete, 93% of respondents said that free shipping, free shipping would encourage them to buy more, not to check out, to actually return to that cart and buy more. So because of this statistic, we actually created a campaign for a client that was only for cart abandoners, and all we wanted, to do, wanted them to do was come back to their cart and check out what they already had in their cart. And what we found out was they increased their cart by 25% on average because they realized, hey, I'm going to get free shipping, so now I can spend that money on more product. So free shipping got us buy more. Um, another great one, I know everyone in this room has seen it. If you shop online, you have had one of your vendors send you an email and say you forgot something. There's something in your cart. Come back. Extremely effective nurture marketing campaign. Um, some other ideas uh, include the picture of the item that they abandoned. There are some plugins that can help you do that. Uh, include reviews of the products that they were looking at. Great way to convert. Um, add links to your guarantee page, another good way to convert. Um, or to your refund page or your privacy policy. If something is wrong with your website and they aren't very clear on how you're using your data, you might find that by including your privacy policy in one of your nurture campaigns that you can get higher conversions. So these are the kinds of things that you can test. And the statistics in this deck, which of course you can download, the statistics in this deck will give you ideas about how to test that in your market. And, and it's, these are ideas that we've used and found out things either for our clients or for ourselves. Uh, so more, most importantly, of course, uh, is the strong call to action. Oh, yeah. Um, and then last chance emails. Last chance emails can bring the end to your nurture campaign. So here's an example. I went to your website. I shopped around a little bit. I put stuff in my cart, and I left. So you fire off an email, and you say, hey, Cindy, we just saw that you left. You have some stuff in your cart. Can you come back? We'll give you free shipping, right? So I wait a couple days. I don't click the link, or maybe I did click the link. I came to your website. I checked it out, free shipping. I even threw something else in my cart, but I still didn't check out, still didn't give you my money. I'm still not a conversion. So your nurture campaign waits a couple of days and says, hey, Cindy, how about if we throw in pink? We're going to throw in pink. And I go, hmm, that's a very tempting offer, but I'm still not convinced. So you can try this two or three times, look at the statistics, take a look at what other people in your industry are saying causes a conversion, and create a nurture campaign with those steps in it. But at the end, you have to give up. And when you give up, all is not lost because no one should leave your nurture campaign unless they ask to. If they unsubscribe, they're done. If they don't unsubscribe, you immediately put them into your drip nurture campaign and they get your newsletter once a month. Or they get, I don't know, your, your weekly sales sheet, whatever it is. Or if you're an enterprise product, maybe you're doing more education. So you send them a link to a video about your product. And then the week after that, you send them an email about uh, or a, a white paper. Okay. So the idea with the drip campaign is you want to stay top of mind. Even though they didn't check out, this is someone who showed an interest in your product, and they are a candidate for purchasing your product. So you want to stay in touch. So remember to never let your nurture campaign die they convert to drip, which in some cases means they also converted to blast emails. Because if you're going to have a flash sale on that product they had in their cart, of course you want them to get that blast email as well, right? Okay. So here's a good example of 
my last chance, our mouse pads, and they gave me a code to get some more discount. And this code, I'm certain, is telling them something about me. So they're tracking this code. Perhaps it's even an A-B test. They're learning something about me. If you're not collecting the data about how your customers interact with your emails, I hope you start tomorrow. Because your emails are a wealth of data, and no one is going to have insight into your customers in the same way that you do or in the same way that you can collect. So according to ListTrack, if you send out that first nurture email within three hours of your shopper abandoning their cart, your emails will average, average across all industries 40% more open rates and 20% higher click-through rates. So that means you just got 20% more customers than you thought you were going to get. They already abandoned, they left. They left stuff in their cart, they're not on your site anymore and you can still save that sale through nurture marketing. Demand Gen says that these nurtured leads represent a 20% increase in sales opportunities over those we forget or ignore. If after a week or two of nurturing, you still haven't seen your shopper come up, come back, don't give up because 29% of site visitors return up to four weeks after their first visit. So if you have an effective nurture campaign, that means you had, let's say, four opportunities once a week, four opportunities to re-engage with that customer and offer them free shipping, free pink, free blue, free whatever. So whatever it takes. But this is a good example of A-B testing where the first offer comes out, we offer them free shipping, then the next offer comes out and we offer them pink. Then we try blue and then we try putting a big old arrow on our button and we try these things and we collect the data on it so that we get smarter and our nurture campaign can be very easily tweaked to integrate the things that we've learned. So if at the end you still can't navigate your customer back to your site, of course you throw them into the drip campaign. And now we're going to talk about some plugins that we use to do this with. Um, who uses Constant Contact? MailChimp. Here's the good news. MailChimp has fabulous automation tools and it's free. So if you have less than 2,000 names, and I'm sorry, that number may have changed. It changed. If you have less than 2,000 names in your MailChimp account, you can use their automation tools for free. So do it. Sign up, even if you're in Constant Contact, and I love Constant Contact, honestly, but because of the advancements that MailChimp has made over the last year in being able to solve small business problems with automation, I always recommend MailChimp now. So even if you have Constant Contact, try MailChimp. Um, our plans for nurture marketing actually look something like this. Uh, we take a pencil. We take a piece of paper and we start out. Who are we focused on? Are we focused on cart abandoners? Are we focused on getting new customers? Are we focused on people who watched our video? Do we want people to watch our video? So we create a plan that looks very similar to this. And we say, if they did this, then they go over here and we're going to send them this email. And if they did this, we're going to send them to the website. And if they get to the website, we're going to do this. And then we're going to do that. So it looks a lot like this. And this really is the best way to plan it with a pencil. Because you want to be able to erase it. And you want to get more stakeholders in your business involved in this process. If you have an enterprise product that you're trying to, say it to, trying to sell, because you're not on the sales team and you're not out there meeting with the customer, you might not actually know what is holding up the sales. So speak with your sales team. Speak with the CEO. Take this pencil drawing into them and say, this is what I think should happen when someone comes to our website and they watch the video about this product and then they leave. You know, should something else happen? And the sales guy's going to go, yeah. Did you tell them about the demo? Oh, the demo. Great idea. Second step of a nurture email. So, 
ask yourself who your visitors are, and this is the same thing that you would do if you were doing Google AdWords campaigns or Facebook campaigns. You'd want to put yourself in the shoe of the visitor and think about what's going on on your site and how would you keep yourself engaged. So according to Small Biz Trends, an estimated 70% of small businesses with a B2B website lack a proper call to action. Are those pages telling your visitors what you want them to do? Are your emails telling visitors what you want them to do? And this is what you want them to do, right? All of us want one of these things. So this has to be at the top level of your campaign. I, this is a good place to just stop for a second. I have 10 minutes left, and I always have so many questions. If you have no questions, I'll keep going, but does anybody have a question? Yes. Yeah, so MailChimp does. Yeah, the question was, does MailChimp have segmentation rules? And it does. It has a different vernacular. They have lists and they have groups, but it does work very similarly. I actually have a client with 500,000 names. We switched them from Sharpspring, or I'm sorry, Hatchbuck, just a couple of weeks ago into MailChimp. And they saved over $1,000 a month on the subscription alone. So yes, it, it is possible. Um, and if you're doing lead scoring, it's kind of hokey but you can do it. Yes? Yes. So his question was, how important, how significant is it to get the day and time right? Here's the deal. You have no idea, right? Let's just admit it. You have no idea what time is the perfect time for your customer to open their email to visit your website, to make a purchase. You don't know. That's what A-B testing is about. Get into MailChimp or whatever. If you're in Hatchbuck or you're in Acton, I don't care what you're in. Get in there and launch that campaign and start tracking your data because your business is unique to your business. And I can give you my stats all day long, but they mean nothing to you. So get in there, create some nurture campaigns, start launching them at different times of day, and look to see when your customers are interacting because that's the meaningful data. So there are lots of ways that you can improve the deliverability of your email. Um, I have an ebook on spider trainers. It's actually called Celebrate Unsubscribes because we do. When somebody unsubscribes, we're done spending money on them. They no longer want to get our message. And there's a lot of tips in there for you on how to make your emails more deliverable. Download the white paper. It's, it'll help. Yes. So we use a, a few tools, and let me see if I can just fast forward to that slide. Um, okay, so her question, you actually had two questions. One is about our privacy policy, and I'm sorry, tell me the first part of your question again. Yes, cart abandonment, okay. Uh, cart abandonment is its own set of problems. However, uh, gated content is a good way to actually get that information. Yes, we do use Facebook pixels. Yes, we do use Google AdWords. So we do have tracking pixels. Now, the second thing is the privacy policy. I have a privacy policy on spider trainers. It is mine. My attorney wrote it, and every one of you can copy it. Go get it. It's fabulous. It really does. It covers cookies and it covers what kind of information that is contained on the website. Please take spider trainers out or don't. <laughs> I, I'm okay if you don't. Uh, no, take, take my company name out and there are a couple of links into it that you'll want to link to other pages in your site. It's a really good privacy policy. It's very comfort feeling. It's a little bit of techies, but not a lot. But everybody can use it. Yeah, so there's a section in there. Uh, she wants to know if it includes AdWords and Facebook pixels. There's a section in there. It's a little bulleted list that says, here's what I use on my website to track your activities. 
And I do also use a cookie banner at the top of my site to let people know that we are tracking them, that we do use cookies. Um, it's a pretty good little free WordPress plugin. I recommend it. You'll be able to see exactly what it is. Um, use it. Any other questions? Yes. So um, my biggest client is a client in Belgium, and I actually have their nurture campaign out by two years. But they're a SaaS product, and the typical sales cycle is 18 months. So it depends on your product, and it depends on how quickly they buy. If you're a retail store, you know, you're, you're selling sandals, of course, that decision-making process is much shorter. So I would probably do four emails over four weeks and see how it goes. So the question was, I'm sorry, I always forget to repeat it. The question was, how many emails do we do and how far out do we plan? And if we have a SaaS model or an enterprise product where the sales cycle could be 18 months, it could be years. So if your sales cycle is years, plan, do the pencil drawing out for a couple of years, but be prepared to change it because you're going to learn things along the way. But at the end of your campaign, the beauty of these campaigns is you should be able to hit the start button and have the whole silly thing start all over. So the question was about MailChimp's feature for predictive mailing. I don't let anybody tell me what to do. I don't even let Google tell me how much to bid for my AdWords. No, I would not ever give that kind of control to an automated application. I think I know more about the customer than, than they do. And so no, I would, not, I would not ever use it. Doesn't mean I wouldn't recommend it to a client that was doing their own campaign and really didn't understand what they were doing. That might, might, might change my answer. Any other questions? Yes. So are you not, do, the question is, if someone is just getting started, what's the minimum number? Do you have any blast emails going out right now? Okay, so they're at least accustomed to hearing from you. And now you're going to add a nurture campaign. I'm going to email them once a week until I see distress. And if I see distress, then I might ratchet it back. But those first four weeks, I'm going to send them one email a week. And if I don't get any movement out of the bulk of the list, that bulk of the list is going to get moved, going to get moved out of nurture and into drip. Any other questions? I do. So the plugins that we use, um, number one is we use Gravity Forms. We don't even mess with Contact 7. I know it comes installed with every theme on the planet. We don't use it. Gravity Forms has Boolean expressions and allows me to deliver the important form completions to the important person. So I can actually make a, a, a rule that says, hey, if they check the box, I want sales information, this goes over to John in sales. If they check the box, I need contact information, this goes to you know, Cindy over and whatever. So we always use Gravity Forms. And Gravity Forms has MailChimp integration, contact, constant contact integration, um, everything on the planet. So we do recommend it. Um, my time is up. I have um, a little swag for you that goes on the back of your phone that holds your, um, your room key without it being demagnetized. So please come up and get it uh, if I can answer questions for you. And thank you very much.